There have been a lot of fluctuating parts when it comes to college track and field right now. Uh, and not just track and field, but just overall sports in general. First, when it comes to the institutions, many of these colleges are changing conferences. You got schools moving from the Big 12 to the SEC. You got schools in the Pac-12 moving to the Big 10. You've got schools moving in and out and changing conferences and locations. And like it's the Big Five or the, the Power Five is now really like the Power Four because the Pac-12 is really you know diminishing with the amount of teams that are leaving. And so it's just been a lot of movement when it comes to the school side of things. On top of that, we're also seeing a lot of movement from the athlete side of things. If you know, if you haven't been living under a rock, you'll know that, you know, Arkansas, Florida, and Auburn have been just like eating up all of the transfer recruits as of recently. Like, if you're an athlete that's been in the transfer portal and you're a top tier athlete, you're probably either going to <laughs> Arkansas, Auburn, or Florida, because they've been just taking up all of the recruits there. This has a lot of impact on how track and field is going to be moving forward and just college sports is moving in forward. And let me tell you why. Or first, how we got here and then what the impact of these transferring and everything is gonna have for track and field moving forward. So uh, right now, the ch recently, what was it? A few, I guess like three, four years ago now, uh, NIL deals became allowed in the NCAA. So athletes were allowed to start making money off their name, image, and likeness and allowing more opportunities for student athletes to make money because everyone knows the, the quintessential broke college kid. You know, these schools are making money off of their names and, and these athletes going there. And so it's allowing people to take that power back and some of the money back as well. And so uh, ever since then, that's when we started seeing more movement of things, whether it be schools trying to get larger, um, you know, go to larger conferences, which would then get you larger recruits, which then gets you more face time. And so we're seeing a lot of movement recently on the institutional side. On the student athlete side, we're seeing a lot of movement as well. So if you're not in the power five, so I didn't know this, you know, at, at my point, cause I went to a very small school, but if you're a power five athlete, you're making uh, a stipend depending on, I think it depends on like your grades and you know, your standing on everything, but um, you're making a stipend from your, your school just by being a student athlete. And depending on the school you're going to, where you are, you could be making anywhere from 2000 to $6,000 a year uh, just for being a student athlete, whether it be with a certain GPA or, or being in a certain conference. Like if you're in the SEC, I think, and you have like a 3.0, you make $6,000 a year. It doesn't matter whether you're a national champion, you're a walk on, you're making that money. Uh, and so you're seeing, you know, these schools being able to offer student athletes more and more money. And so uh, now some of these athletes that would traditionally maybe go to a smaller school, you know, a non-Power 5 school, now it's like, oh, well, I would like to go to a non-Power 5 school. I probably would be making, you know, I would probably improve my performance better. It might be a better fit for me, but I have this opportunity to make some money. So maybe I go to a Power 5 school that may not be the right fit. And so these aren't, I'm not talking about the names that we all know, these giant, you know, really talented athletes. I'm talking about those athletes that they don't really score in the conference. You know, they're, they're just going there and, and competing and maybe doing well. Maybe they do score, you know, they get seventh or eighth and, you know, maybe in the, their, you know, the Pac-12, the Big 12, the Big 10 conference championship. But in other words, like not athletes that we really know of because that's who majority of these, majority of student athletes really are. Um, and so it's like, well, your, your, your performance may have impacted and maybe your grades did as well. Like maybe you were better suited for a school that was a non-Power 5, but because they had this opportunity, you went to a larger school and maybe it didn't, it didn't work out for you. Um, and then there, there's other things you gotta take a look at of how this is impacting recruiting. So now we're seeing a lot more student athletes or a lot more schools utilize the transfer portal versus recruiting out of high school. Why? Because you know what you're getting with a student athlete that transfers. If you see a person run a 999 in, in college, you, you know that that's what you're getting. You know what that person has ran, you know how they perform at national championships, you know everything, so you're not guessing. When you're recruiting at a high school, you're guessing because the high school life versus the college life is very, very different. And so it's like, hey, would I rather take an athlete that's proven, I've seen them compete at the NCAA level before, and recruit them, 
Or would you rather recruit an athlete out of high school where you don't know what they're gonna do, it's a wild card, you have a good idea, you're hoping that your recruiting styles you know, work out, but at the end of the day, you don't know how it's gonna work out. If I was a coach, I would say, oh no, yeah, let's work on the transfers. Let's get, let's get them as, as many as possible because that's, we, they're guaranteed, we know what, what we're gonna be getting when we get there versus high school, you know, might fizzle out, might not work out. They may transfer their own. So um, we're seeing a lot more student athletes, you know, getting poached from these larger schools because it's like, hey, would you rather come to our school? We have a lot more money. We have a lot more opportunity. Uh, you know, it's a better name, NIL, you can come here. You know, and so you're seeing athletes transferring everywhere. Um, me personally, I don't think it's a bad idea. Like I, like I wish that I was a student, I wish that I was talented enough and I wish that I was a student athlete when this was going on because then I think it's, it's allowing for more athlete movement. Like coaches can go wherever they want. Like if you're, if you're a coach and you want to leave this school and go to a coach at another school the next year and then the next year you want to coach somewhere else and coach somewhere else, coach somewhere else, you can go and you can follow the money. But if you're a student athlete, you can't really do that. Like there, there's limits, and you know, it, it, when you're a scholarship athlete, like that was all that you could that you would get. You would make your scholarship. But now, like it's allowing these student athletes to make money off their name, and I think it's a it's a great idea because we're seeing a lot of them, you know, elevating the brands to a way that, um, you know, it's getting more in the mainstream. I mean, you know, some of the biggest NIL people, you know, Matthew Bowling, Masai Russell, like some of the, you know, they're two of the biggest names when it comes to the you know, uh, advertising and, and NIL, NIL deal stuff. So I think that it's great for the college athletes because you're now able to finally make money when, you know, hey, many of these student athletes may not want to do the pro track stuff or may not even be talented enough for pro track, but it works for NIL and they're able to make their money and then go into the professional world and, you know, kind of work from there. But you have to look at it where, you know, student athletes are leaving. Like I, like I said, I went to a very small school and oftentimes the top talent from our school would get, would transfer and go to a larger school because it was better, you know, better opportunities that they saw or, you know, it's, you're competing for a larger, a larger school. So it's just like that would happen pretty often. And now I can only imagine when there's the NIL aspect of things, that's going to happen even more with student athletes leaving because it's like, oh wait, I can go to a, like, a place with a better opportunities and all this, all that, and I can make money? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that because the athlete from you know uh, an SEC school is gonna make a whole lot more money than athlete from you know a school in the in the MAC or in the NEC or in the Sun Belt. Like they're just not gonna make as much money because of the school that they're at. And so um, I, this is gonna have an impact. And I'm wondering what thing, what student athlete, it, what it means to be a student athlete is gonna look like in the next few years because. It's, uh, it's, it's changing, man. Like it's, it's changing a lot. And so I'm wondering in five, six years, you know, when NIL has run its course even more, like, is it gonna be, you know, pretty much you have to, if you're getting recruited, if you're not like a top five recruit, you're not gonna go to power five. You're gonna go through, you know, whether it be JUCO or, or a low level D, D1 school, and then eventually transfer into these larger schools. Like, I wonder what it's gonna, it's gonna be because it's, uh, it's changing a lot. It is changing an awful lot. And it's very interesting to, to see how it's gonna impact the rest of, of college sports for sure. But um, let me know what you think. What do you think about Shelly Ann Frazier Price, Commonwealth Games, track and field, as well as college track. I would love to hear that. That's gonna do it from us here, this episode of Track World News. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, helps us know that you're enjoying all the content. Have a good one. Peace.